नमस्ते I I'm not sure, but I've been told today is International Happiness Day, and uh, you know, few words I should speak. First of all, I find it very paradoxical that one should keep one day as Happiness Day. So it means that you know all other days are days of sorrow. So when you have this day is Mom's Day, I understand that on a Mom's Day you are specifically focusing upon Mom, whom you may have forgotten for three sixty four days. But happiness is our natural state; it's our birthright. what makes us forget happiness some people have uh, often ask you what happens when you come to ashram why do you go to ashram what do you get and they want to know whether you get a prosperity how do you manage life and all that they ask and my universal thing and i am sure everybody will agree the first thing we are given of course there is a joke about it but i don't want to get into a joke the first thing you are given when you come to the ashram and join as you know you have come even otherwise when you come just for a visit is your quota of happiness which we have lost unfortunately one of the civilizational loss is to be naturally happy and the sign of that loss is that we need artificial means so to start with as a starter i must say that all this idea of measuring happiness means we have changed positions happiness should be our natural state it's our birthright even animals have it but we lose it so we devise parameters what are those parameters quality of life quantity of life and this sometimes i feel this is a very uh, you know long back uh, there was a whole uh, index which was developed we all know simon binet's uh, iq test and it was developed only to prove that look there are the caucasians and the asians and indians they are to be ruled because their iq is low the negroes are low now if you go into the iq test you will see there are lot of things which are based on language now if you have such test through which you measure happiness you don't even know what you have really measured so many times these things are done with an idea to say look you know how happy we are it is like you it's like a self hypnosis and when nations do it they do it as a means to prove that you know we are doing good when everything is you know um, falling apart then you not need to take out the happiness index that look you know we are doing very good we are still on top and look here you so this we should not take all these things very seriously you know one of the things we have to really get rid of from our head is to take all this kind of studies and these things which come out from the other side of the globe seriously they don't deserve even a little attention and if you go into the details you'll see it logically absurd the skills that are used who has really tried who has really you know uh, done all this uh, i'm not getting into that detail but what really is happiness now like any experience of life we must understand that things move from the gross to subtle you ask a yogi his outside life he may have very little ask him are you happy you know that story of the thief who came to a steal something from a you know monk's room and he couldn't find anything so he was going away and the monk called him he said you know you have missed something monk was awake so he said he was bit afraid he said no no there is a bowl there just go there and check it out so he saw there is a golden bowl and he said you take this so he takes it next day he comes and says keep this bowl give me that he said what give me that which made you give away the bowl so easily you didn't think twice now this is what it's a question of values of a civilization there are civilizations and it's nothing to do with west or east but of course there is a certain difference there are civilizations which have developed around dehe atma bodh the body is the self and the criteria of happiness the criteria of love the criteria of knowledge is purely based on physical and the vital so if your desires are satisfied if physically you are in surroundings which are rich and luxurious you are happy but there are civilizations which have developed around just the reverse not the dhyatmo that is what marks an asuric civilization if you ask ravana what happiness means to you he would say sone ki lanka ask rama what happiness means to you he would say tyag and tapasya <laughs> it's so different ask ravana what is love what does love mean to you he'll say go snatch anybody whom you like by force and make her your own that's love you ask rama 
he would say however far you may be in space and time yet to continue to burn that flame of love at the altar of the god of love that is rama's love so we must understand many of these things that come from a certain context is absolutely an asuric concept of life that they atm both the body and the vital so there is a very gross way of understanding everything like the word love one of the most distorted word is love love has to be physical and if you say love means physical and vital but there is love which is so profound the love of radha who is the epitome of love never married krishna never lived with him and yet today you swear by radha's love this is love in our setting to another context will be completely unimaginable somebody else will say no no this is all story but in india we live this truth especially in india asiatic cultures are like that but especially in india so also happiness can be very gross and crude you ask somebody what is happiness he will say oh you know going to a food joint like i often give this example people come here pondicherry is famous for two things wine and divine <laughs> wine is the crude stuff the crudest the lowest in terms of joy of life it does give joy ask i mean you can't deny that but is the crudest when we have nothing when we are deprived inwardly of uh, you know the natural happiness then we turn to ask a child to drink uh, uh, wine or uh, liquor the child will naturally refuse not only animals but it's very unfortunate nowadays some parents in the name of its school they have started doing this there should be natural happiness even psycho the neuropsychologists will say so that in the brain there are normal happiness hormones and they are called endorphins there are studies to show that if you meditate your endorphins are released if you play a game endorphins are released it's you don't have to i mean it's a proven fact that if you meditate if you are quieter if you are you know freed from internal conflicts which come because of many issues then you have the natural joy which children have because you know they are freed from all these things they are naturally playing children are all the time jumping or playing something their format is different and they are naturally happy they are not taught or conditioned that you must have this and have that therefore you'll be happy what is it that the child needs at most at most the only thing that a child need is mother's lap that's all and i am not saying something metaphorically there are actual studies that the first 3 years the only thing that matters in the child's development is contact with the mother either mother or mother figure and if you deprive a child of that there is a lifelong tendency towards depression you deprive the child and it's not about physical mother contact comfort so what does a child needs the mother's lap why because the original happiness was in the womb and therefore the highest happiness is again when the soul within us rediscovers the divine mother it's a symbol and then what does it do it just goes there she provides takes care you suckle her milk and grow strong and healthy and wise so we must put this into the context of you know happiness day all these figures ask them do you know what is that happiness which comes when a soul is surrendered itself to the divine mother and you see how you are ogled at by large eyes you mean which mother they'll not even understand what it means because it's too subtle too profound too deep too high too sublime for the gross senses to even grasp it so let us not be fooled by all this tomfoolery <laughs> these indexes these figure they will come and go civilizations will come and go happy people will come happy of people of this kind will come and go but what will remain through the ages see many civilizations have come like this and gone egyptian chaldean many others where if you look at rome what an ancient civilization even in india you have the lanka atlantis so many of them have come and gone but what has endured is none of these things what has endured is this tatra komoha kashoka ekatva manupashyata to dwell in oneness is to be happy to feel love and oneness in the heart is to be happy wherever there is love is 
there is joy. It's a twin, it is bound to come. And wherever joy is missing, that means love is missing. So this the secret of happiness is to learn to love. Now some people say, oh, that means you must start with self-love. Please, the most dangerous doctrine, it's just like saying that, you know, uh, you are God. Start by believing you are God. Yes, that's true of our deepest self. Start by loving someone. Love by its nature is a reaching out of yourself to another. Love is not about loving oneself. This is a strange twist of things. Love by its nature is reaching out to another. Who that another could be? Hitler sustained his joy by loving his girlfriend and his cat. That was source of joy. Otherwise his life was a bleak, miserable thing. Find something, if nothing else, the plants around you. The cat in your garden. The dogs around. It's treated. Now, now it's proven that if you are going through depression, take a dog and make him your pet. It is known that it lifts up depression. Why? It's nothing to do with poor dog. <laughs> And I see a lot of people who are living alone, they keep a pet. It's because you suddenly feel the flow of love. So why can't you love a human being? Because human beings will ask you 100 questions. They will have expectation. Yesterday you told me this, today you didn't say. Yesterday you got me this, today you didn't do. Pets won't ask all that. You know? <laughs> he won't ask, Kal wo khana diya tha, aaj kyo nahi diya? <laughs> They will, because they don't have a mind, crooked mind of human beings. So the second aspect of happiness is this crooked mind which has robbed us of natural happiness. See, children are naturally happy. When they grow up, you say, Cadbury se joy milta hai. Bas start ho gaya. Thoda aur bade huye, Coca-Cola se milta hai. Then little more bigger, ne ne number aane se milta hai. Ab number bhi le aya, ab kya hai? Ne ne ne, pariksha bhi tumhara usme. So ab now you know he has cleared the exam also. No, 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 you have to get that degree. Okay, I have got the degree. No, no, see there are many with the same degree. You must succeed, you must be top in your field. Okay, now I am top in my field. See, but you have lost everything. How you will be happy? <laughs> because you have gone into a race where at the end, you, it's called Manufactured Artificial Happiness Index. M-A-H-I. Mahi. Artificial happiness. But a natural happiness is, it comes when there are no desires. Desires bring turbulence. Desires bring expectation. Desires bring fear of loss, anxieties. Desires bring thrill and pleasure. But its rebound is unhappiness. Freedom from desires is the price we must pay for permanent happiness. Freedom from desire and the ego brings oneness. And if we can't do all that because that is too much of a labor, at least love. Love this world, love creation. Fear not from loving, that line from Rishi. Love men, love God. If we can learn to love, we'll always be happy and love needs nothing. If we need some reason to love, then it's not love anymore. It will not bring joy because it's not pyar but vyapar. <laughs> love naturally, spontaneously, is the essence of creation. The flowers, the trees, the uh, rivers, the sun, all of them love. They pour in abundance, the earth. They don't ask, Mera fal le reho, kya bhav le reho? The river doesn't charge tax, you know, that famous story in Ramayana, when he is asked that how much, what should be the law of taxation, he says that as a river charges tax. <laughs> all that you need is to keep her clean, that's all. Otherwise you are the loser, nobody else. So when we love this creation, why should we love this creation? Simply because there is God in it, the one who is the source of love then who will not be happy? But this happiness is too subtle, too refined for a gross mind. So let us be done away with all these Women's Day, Mother's Day, Father's Day, <laughs> poor father, <laughs> Mother's Day, everybody celebrate, Father's Day comes and goes. <laughs> Children's Day, all this is not, uh, you know, it's a kind of uh, neo-colonization. <laughs> let us go back to 
the ancient truth. We don't say Mother's Day, Father's Day. What do we say? Matra Devo Bhava, Pitra Devo Bhava, Acharya Devo Bhava. We don't say Teacher's Day. So they are like gods. They are always there. They are sunshine. Why should they be one day dedicated to anything? Valentine's Day. Love is only one day and is that love? Most people who give a flower to express love, it lasts as long as the flower lasts. And you know what I mean. <laughs> give your heart, not that heart while I smiley. If you have the courage, it needs tremendous courage to love. Weaklings cannot love. Cowards cannot love. It needs tremendous courage because love demands sacrifice and the completest sacrifice. Look at that passage in Savitri where Shubhendra describes love. They go together. Love, beauty, harmony and joy. They are always together. Love in her was wider than the universe. The whole world could take refuge in her single heart. Thus could she harbor her, his sublimer breath. In her, he met his own eternity, love. He found the perfect place in her heart. It needs vastness, it needs strength, smallness. My country, the fact that you are saying happiness has to do with this country and that country, it's a non-starter. Is not happiness a universal thing? The study's initial thing is motivated. It cuts into boundaries what is universal whole. So let us grow large and vast and free and full of delight always because delight is a birthright. And last two lines in Savitri, who deserves this bliss? Not all this happiness and all this pleasure and thrill. We are not talking about that. The highest bliss, who deserves? Is it somebody who reads the scripture? Is it somebody who sits for meditation? Is it somebody who does this, that? In Savitri, Shobindu gives a wonderful secret. A date is fixed in the calendar of the unknown, an anniversary of the birth sublime. So what is the date when the original purpose of birth will be fulfilled? And there he says, after we have served this great divided world, God's bliss and oneness are our inborn right. After we have served this great divided world, God's bliss and oneness are our inborn right. This is our idea of what true happiness is. Namaste.